is fair about that? Not a I mean, lot. the Senate is based <laughs> on feather bedding, no, no, junkets, no. and unfairness. I mean, can't you see the, 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 the philosophical difficulty of your position? As a I fair can, person. I can. First of all, it's 12 senators, actually. All right, 12. It makes it worse. Right, 12. Doubly, doubly worse. Yeah, 12. Yeah, I, uh, I think it's time we looked at how the Senate represents, how senators represent. Yeah. And uh, I think that we should look at regions of equal numbers of people. But the voting system for the Senate is heaps fairer. Yep. Well, Yes, well. it is. Yes, it is. Because if you get 10% of the votes, you get 10% of the seats. 20% of the vote, 20% of the seats. In the House of Representatives, under their system, you can get a million number one votes and get nobody elected. Yeah. Because they do their little preference deals. Yeah, so... But this bears out your thesis that common sense and politics aren't in the same bed. Oh, no, they should be. Well, they of just course they should they be, just they haven't never been. are in Australia. No, they just haven't been enough. Hmm. Because if you... I, I guess if you're not in there sparring every question time and trying to get your face on the news, mm. um, you know, you're on the risk of being overlooked. But it's double-edged because... People want some relief from that, and I think deep down, judging by the people who jump out and say things to me at airports, they're actually quite relieved that there's someone who's not a rat bag, who's yeah. actually in, in a responsible position and who's, who's perceived anyway to um, weigh up the argument on its merit and come yes. to a decision. Cheryl, are you pleased that you left the teaching service? I mean, it's yes. people of yes your and very that. sort that should be in front of kiddies, Why teaching is that? them. Being reasonable, even-handed, etc., etc., etc. Why did you leave the department? Why did you leave the chalk. Belco <laughs> chalk behind? I got sick of the corrections on Sunday night. Mm. Now I just read a million papers. Vis-a-vis mm. -vis that, do you find that uh, it's a difficult sort of life you lead now in mm. as much as you carry the weight of your whole party, unlike, you know, the larger parties where there are a lot of faces that represent it. Mm. Uh, let's face it, you are really the only representative of your party in the same way when Janine was at the helm, Janine was the, the, the face of the party and uh, mm. Johnny Coulter sort of had a, you know, Senator Coulter had a difficult time because he was sort of, well, I don't know, not quite right. Uh, but is it difficult? I mean, wherever you go, you don't have much private life anymore because, <laughs> because you are the party. Yeah, absolutely not. I think one of the funniest things that's happened to me was uh, it was a very grey day on the Gold Coast and I was picking a very sort of isolated little spot to swim and there was a, just a couple of people swimming and a man getting tossed about in the surf and he got washed into my feet and then he stood up, washed the sort of water out of his eyes and went, oh, Senator Kerno! And it was a person who'd been a witness at, a, at the print inquiry oh, yes, just yes. a couple of days previously in Sydney. And it's true. I can't seem to, to do anything or go anywhere now. And I notice it. Yeah. I feel the same. Yes. But other people are noticing me. Is it fun? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. I must say that with enthusiasm. Yes, it can be fun. Um, the party after the native title vote went through was fantastic. It was exhilarating and worth every minute of being there and every minute of the marathon debate. Right. Was Robert Hill at the party? Uh, I imagine he would no, have been. No, he wasn't. Robert no, Hill? No, funny that, yeah. No, no, no. no. <laughs> they, were, they were wondering why all those people were clapping in the public gallery still. Well, on that cheery note, Cheryl, thanks very much for coming in. Good luck with the budget session. I know you're off to Canberra tonight to open up shop and uh, hoe in tomorrow. And uh, thanks very much for being part of the life tonight. By the time I was 20, I'd had 17 really bad pranks. But since I've had the doll, I've had none. The little Greg Norman car doll. Put your loved ones in hands that care. The hands of a shark. The Players Theatre presents The World of Ian, with Paul Sirinan as Ian, Lisa Forrest as Susan, Cole Joy as Ian's dad, Greg Matthews as Ian's friend Cole, Annette Shunwar as Susan's friend Deirdre, and Ted Mulry as Bob the Neighbour. All he talks about is fish and how to catch them. You encouraged them. Because I thought it would lead to other things. But it did. You married him. <laughs> no, but I've just gone right off him. In fact, I'm now in love with Cole. <laughs> I think. Hi, Deirdre. Hello, Ian. Where's Cole? I don't know. Where's Bob? Guess. Out in the boat? <laughs> Deirdre and Bob are not getting on too well. Oh, that's no good. 
In fact, she's got an eye for coal. What? <laughs> Hi, Deirdre. Bob's out in the back yard looking for you. Is he back? Apparently. God, he'll probably come here then. Can I hide in the bedroom? Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, no. Hey, Bob. Hey, everyone. Seen Dee anywhere? Nope. Well, um, I saw her earlier. She's in the bedroom, Bob. Uh, sorry, Ian, but I'm not going to become involved in some absurd charade. If Bob and Deirdre have got troubles, they've got to sort them out for themselves. Bob's is right, Ian. Look, Bob, Deirdre's in love with Cole. Hi, everyone. What's the score? You look a bit down in the dumps, Bob. What's the matter? Run out of bait. <laughs> Hi, Tim Zura again, and I've seen cricket played all over the world. But what I've only seen here is that island where everybody buffs up for a holiday. I've never actually been, but it must be wonderful. You know, just lying there with nothing on? Nude Island, where doing the rabbit becomes a habit. Australians, you've sat in the bleachers for long enough. And now it's time to strap on the boots and blow your trumpets. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the trumpet spot once again. And look, I love coming to this spot here in Perth on the outskirts of Fremantle for inspiration. People have to start somewhere. And Alan Bond started on a ladder painting this sign. I come back here, I draw a lot of strength from this simple Australian motive plastered as it is on a flour mill. Roy, there's so many, many, many times the rain and wind has beaten on this sign. So many other people have come this way. But Alan Bond remains the one who I think sums up the history of Perth, the endeavour here, and the sound of a trumpet. Yeah, it is, a, it is an inspirational sight, HG. You're quite right. If you look at the style, it's very naive. Uh, dingo flower, marvellous flower it is. And if you look closely at the sign, Alan's actually left an eye in the dingo. The dingo sort of looks at you, and as you go past, you can't help but feel that you're being looked at by Alan's dingo's eye. And in the other motifs, in the trucks and what have you around the place, the eye isn't there. It was only Alan who thought of the eye. And there's a little bit here I'd like to draw your attention to, if I might. See where the uh, the front leg joins onto the body? Not yeah. the not one, the leading leg, but the second one in. Yeah. There's a slight hiccup in the paintwork there. And I believe that's Alan's little sign. Little saying, joke. Little joke. He's yeah. laughing at us through yeah. the paintwork on the dingo sign, yeah. vis-a-vis finance, vis-a-vis Perth, vis-a-vis courtroom dramas, vis-a-vis -vis dingoes. Yeah. It's a tremendous touch. And if you look closely, and there are two tails actually fused together. It's a two-tailed dingo, and I think that's interesting as well. Beautiful work. And such a lovely place to play the trumpet. Coming up next on ABC TV is Clive Hale talking from both ends. Yes, welcome back to This Sporting Life, and now it's time for Picture This. And last week, Roy said an absolute cracker. Roy... Take us through last week's picture this. Yes, it was as follows. Pick, pick the odd person out of these four. A, Henri Lacan, B, Monet, C, Charles de Gaulle, and D, Jim Courier. And all the correct oh. entries were stacked into this barrel here. Roy dips his hand in and pulls out a winning Whoa. entry. Let's have a look. Facts. Let's see. The obvious odd person out is Henri Lacan because he is the only left-handed tennis player amongst them. Absolutely right. K. Matkovich of Smithton, Tasmania. Congratulations, coming your way, Charles. Congratulations, Kay. That's tremendous work. And, of course, the brilliant erratic Henri Lecomte was the answer. This week, let's have a look at the prize-wise. There's the hat again, the Roy and HG hat, the pound-for-pound -pound cassette, everything you need to know about the fight game in that, plus the date finger shirt. And remember, the shirts, the bums, the date finger and the Asian romp, all available as these are from ABC shops around the nation. Do yourself a favour. Roy, set out this week's picture this. Yes. Who is the, or what is the odd thing out of the following? Uh, a. Citizen. <laughs> B. Sydney Fisher. C. The Nissan Skyline. Or D. The Sistine Chapel. Yes. Send your entries to picture this. 
uh, care of uh, this sporting life, uh, ABC TV, GPA Box, Triple Nine Four City Two Thousand One, Fax Nine Five Zero Three Four Six. Yes, a tremendous, uh, a tremendous prize on offer there, as we mentioned. Now, Roy, I believe Asia is laughing at the moment, and if we stop and listen for a moment, I believe we can hear it laughing because of this ludicrous decision by the Australian Cricket Board to have not only Zimbabwe and England tour next summer, but to have two Australian teams go round in the UR. There's Australia and Australia A. Two Australian teams. Now, well, I can't... Well, I haven't picked myself up off the floor since the news came through. People are laughing. People are being stupid about this. People are absolutely outraged that cricket in Australia should have stooped so low as to have Australia and Australia A challenging the Poms and the Zimbabweans. Roy, where do you stand on this issue that's dividing this nation apart? Well, it gets a sort of World Series feel about it, USA-style baseball, doesn't it? It does. Which worries me. I, I think, you know, the amount of interest is shown by Australians in two Australian teams battling each other can be well demonstrated. If we have a look at the Sheffield Shield final, I think we've got a bit of footage of it, and uh, you'll see here a beautiful game of was. These are both Australian teams, the two finest Australian teams in Australia as of the end of this season. And uh, look at the sort of reaction it got from the public. Look at the crowd uh, the there. The pictures tell a thousand, a th uh, uh, a thousand words, don't yes. they? Yes. You've got to remember that there's yeah. more interest in the Ferris wheel. Yes. And uh, obviously heaps of people came down to shake each other's hands. Yes. The heaps of people were all bleeding players. Yes. Gives you an idea of the interest in Australia v Australia A. Now the yes. other thing is, what happens if Australia A beats Australia? Uh, I mean, does Australia yeah. A then become Australia and Australia become Australia right, A? Right. And what happens yeah. if you had an Australia beat? Oh, bugger, why not have five sides and call it the Sheffield Shield and be exactly. done with it? Exactly. You know, get rid of it. I mean, exactly. I've said for years that uh, England should not be allowed to come back to Australia and play cricket until they've learnt to play the bloody game. Off your shoot. Thanks very much for inventing the game. Now leave us alone to get on with it. And this summer, Salt is rubbed into that wound yeah. by simply tossing up them two Australian sides, right? I, I like the idea of possible v probable stuff. Yes, well, or that's... shirts v skins. Oh, I'd love to see shirts v skins go round. Yes, between Especially, two Australians. I yeah. wouldn't mind skins upstairs, skins downstairs. Yes, now you're talking. I think that could get paid Yes. Again. Then you'd have four or five Australian sides. Yes, I... You couldn't keep up the demand. No, that's right, that's right, because people would want to see that. I'll tell you one thing that would bring people back this summer, and that is let's ban all padding. Let's get rid of all shoulder pads, thigh pads, flute pads, head pads, and just see fit Australians.